Hello everyone, welcome back to another Design Clips with W Plus 9. This is Dawn, and today's project, our featured stamp set, is the Folk Art Flurry stamp set. Now this is an oldie but goodie for sure, but we're going to be pairing it with a lot of different product from a lot of different manufacturers. It's going to be a product smorgasbord in here. I'll be using some things that are new to me and maybe new to you as well to create these gorgeous shaker tags. They are a lot of fun, so let me show you how to get started. Now the base of the tags are these watercolored panels and I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress cardstock here and I've just cut it in half right down the center so these are measuring in at two and three quarters by four and a quarter. And I'm going to start by prepping each panel with my embossing buddy bag. This will remove static electricity and cover up any oils from where I touched it and then the embossing powder will only stick to places where I stamped the Versamark. And now I'm ready to do my stamping. Like I said, we'll be using the Folk Art Flurries. This is a great stamp set. It's got a couple pieces in here so that you could build a snowflake with different colors. And then it's also got some pre-built ones. Now we're gonna be doing all of our stamping and embossing in white. So I'm just picking the pre-built ones and I'm using a small, medium, and large sized one. And then I'm just gonna come in with my Versamark and start stamping out my snowflakes. And then I'll add my white embossing powder and then I'll use my heat tool to set it. Now this is one time where it really doesn't matter if your pattern is perfectly spaced out or balanced because we're gonna be putting a lot of fun stuff inside this shaker tag and it's your pattern is just there as a support in the background. It's not gonna stand out if it's not perfectly spaced out. And you'll just repeat the same thing for each of your panels. Now there's a lot to fit into this video so that's why I've kind of sped through this part. I think we're all pretty familiar with heat embossing. Now I wanted each of my tags to be monochromatic, so I based my color scheme off of these Martha Stewart microbeads and iridescent uh, glitter. I'm also going to be filling all of them with this big chunky clear glitter, also by Martha Stewart. And I'll be adding sequins and stuff to it as well, but these were the inspiration for my color palette. So let me show you how I matched these up. I knew that I definitely wanted to use the yellow, the pink, the clear iridescent, and the aqua color included in the Martha Stewart glitter. So I started swatching out my Tim Holtz Distress Inks and found that the scattered straw, the peacock feathers, and the sponge sugar would work perfectly for that yellow, the aqua, and the iridescent. And then to get something to match that pink, since it's a warmer, corally pink, I just mixed the sponge sugar and the um, scattered straw, and that gave me a nice, warm, peachy, pink, corally color. And now I can just start my watercoloring. I'm just gonna pre-wet the background, and I'm using a, I think this is a three-quarter inch flat brush. This is from the Ranger Multi Brush Set. And I'm going to put out my Distress Ink onto an acrylic block, and then I'm gonna pick it up from there and start dropping it onto the wet background. This is going to give me a very soft, variegated background. And you can see where the white embossing is. It's resisting that color, and now those snowflakes are starting to stand out. I'm gonna build this color up in layers, so I'm gonna go ahead and dry this with my heat tool, and then I'm gonna come in and add another layer of color along with some splatters. And this time I'm going on to dry paper. I'm using less water this time because I want these to be more defined areas of color. And then I'll just allow this to dry and it's the holidays so we have to have lots of shine. So I'm gonna use our Pure Color Spray Mist and Shimmer and I'm gonna add this all over the background now. This has little fine particles of mica in it so you'll wanna give it a nice good shake. You can look at the bottom and see as long as all of the mica on the bottom is evenly dispersed, it's not sitting on the bottom, you're good to go. And I'll just give this a few good spritz all over the back, and then I'll add a few larger drops by using the nozzle. I'll take it off the top and put some bigger splatters on there just by tapping on the end of it here. And then you can see all of this gorgeous shine that the shimmer spray adds to the background. And I'll just repeat all of these same steps with each of the backgrounds, with the blue, the yellow, and the pink. And once they're dry, I'm just gonna use a dry paper towel here to just buff across and remove any of the color that has settled on top of our white embossing. This will just make those snowflakes stand out even more. And now we're ready to start putting together our tags. And for that, we're going to be using the We Are Memory Keepers Fuse Tool. Now this one's new to me and it's my first time using it. It comes with this little hot um, iron. You plug it in, it heats up, and then it actually fuses or melts the plastic together to seal it. For my tags, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Storage Pockets. Um, they're perfect for this. The plastic is just the right thickness and pliability, and it melts together easily. And um, it's very economical. They come 50 to a pack, so they're not expensive at all. And then what will happen is we're gonna seal all of the edges together and seal up all of those sequins and glitter inside to create our little shaker tags here. 
Now two of these will fit perfectly inside one pocket and what I found to be the easiest is to put a little removable adhesive on the back of my panel and then use my grid mat to line it up in the inside of the pocket here. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just found that lining it up and making sure that it was straight actually assisted me when it came time to trim. All of my trimming was straight because everything was square inside of the pocket as well as on the outside. And now we can start fusing together the sides. Now the kit comes with this little ruler and it's got this great little gap in the middle here. That's where you're gonna run the iron through. The thing I like about this ruler also is that it's got these little like jelly feet on the bottom, which are like non-skid feet. So you're not sliding all over the place. Another thing to take note is you'll notice that I'm now working on the on some grid paper. This is actually a thick pad of grid paper from Simon Says Stamp. This tool, the the tip of this gets really hot and it will melt a craft mat or your self-healing mat. So just make sure you're putting down something thick underneath. Thick cardstock or a pad of paper works great. And now we're ready to fuse this. So I've taken the ruler and I've lined the groove, the open groove up along the edge of my cardstock. And now I'm taking the fuse tool and running it through that groove, that open groove. This is going to guide it in a straight line. And that wheel, as it turns, the teeth on it are going to fuse together. Everywhere a tooth hits the plastic, it's going to fuse the top layer with the bottom layer. Now, this is where this being my first time using this comes into play. I actually went a little too close to my cardstock. Because we're going to be adding sequins and glitter inside here, which is going to add a little bit of bulk, I should have left a little more room between the edge of the cardstock and the edge where I fused it. This would allow the bag to expand a little and accommodate that extra bulk. So on the subsequent tags, I left anywhere from a 16th to an eighth of an inch between the edge of the cardstock and the um, fused line. Now, I just wanted to point that out because the blue one did end up splitting on the side, but all of the rest were fine. I left enough room and they were able to easily accommodate the extra bulk. So I'll continue. I'm gonna fuse three sides of the tag and I'm gonna leave the fourth side open to do my filling. Once I've got three sides all sealed up and fused, I'm gonna take it over to my trimmer and I'm gonna trim these apart so that they'll be ready to fill with all of our glittery goodness. Now I've left about a quarter of an inch between the trimmed edge and the fused edge. This will just add stability and keep it from separating. And each of these tags I'm gonna fill the same way. I'm gonna start with the coarse glitter and I'm just gonna put a good little base amount in there and then I'm going to come in and add the iridescent stars and I'll make sure that I've got enough there and then I'll add in the micro beads. And this is just, oh, I love it. Look at all of the shimmer and the shine. Oh, remember, you gotta say shimmer. <laughs> but I mean, is that not just, oh, yes, holidays. Mm. Now you could stop there, but of course I wanted to add some sequins in. So I'm adding some crystal clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. These are my favorite. The clear ones are just, oh, they're my favorite. And then for the yellow one, the Lemon Meringue uh, Pretty Pink Posh sequins were perfect for this one. So I'm just taking a good little handful. This is a mix of their all their sizes, the small, the medium, and the large. So I just stick a handful in there, make sure, yep, and there's more room. So of course I'm gonna add more. <laughs> And then again, for the blue one, the aquamarine uh, sequins are perfect. And then finally, for the pink one, I added a handful of the, uh, this is a mix of their pinks. It's the pink blush and pink peonies. So that finishes this one off perfectly. Now, once you've got them all filled up just the way you like them, then you can seal off that top edge on all four and then trim off any excess. So you can see here that this is all nice and secure. Nothing is flying out of it. So we know that we've got all the edges all nice and sealed up. And now it's time to turn these into tags. And to do that, I'll be using some grommets or some eyelets. Now these are old from Stampin' Up. I don't even know if they still sell these, but I happen to have them in my stash. Any grommets or eyelets that you have in your stash will do. So I'm just gonna take some of these out and then I'll be using the crocodile tool to set these. Now, first I want to mark where I'm going to be punching my hole and I want it to be in the center. So I'm using my grid mat here and a permanent marker to just mark the uh, center of my tags here so I know where to punch my hole. And then I'll just line up my uh, crocodile with that hole, punch it, and then I'll just take the eyelet and push it through and then I'll use the um, crocodile tool here. I'm gonna use that to 
clamp it down and seal that back. Now, what this will do is it'll keep all of those insides, all that glitter and everything, it seals that hole. Otherwise, all of our glitter would just kind of shake right out of the hole. This eyelet will seal that hole off and keep all of our goodies inside of our tag. And we are in the home stretch now, I promise. Now it's just time to decorate those tags and you can decorate these any way you like. I decided to use the stag from our stag trio die and I will be stamping a sentiment from our heartfelt holiday stamp set onto our basic banner die. So I've already pre-treated these with a, an embossing buddy bag and now I'm stamping them in Versamark and then heat embossing all of them. Now I started off using the bright silver for all of the tags except for the yellow one. The yellow one I am heat embossing in gold but then after I was done, I noticed that the silver was a little too bright for the coloring of that grommet that we used. So I used Ranger's Liquid Platinum instead, and I think that this looked much better. And I'll show you here in just a second. Now to adhere these, I'm using foam tape. I'm tucking the banner behind the legs of the deer here, so it'll pop up on top of the deer, and then the other two ends with the foam tape will securely fasten to the tag. And this will cause that banner to look curved and just add a little extra dimension. So here you can see the finished tags. I finished each of them off a little differently in terms of the ribbon. So you could use a simple white ribbon like I've done on this one, or if you want a more feminine look, here I've used some seam binding. And then on the other two, I've used some pretty pink posh twine. On the yellow one, I used a gold and cream one. I just thought it matched really well with the kind of goldish coloring we've got going on. And then on the blue one, I used the silver and cream thread. You can also see here how much better that liquid platinum matches the finish on that grommet. And I just think all of these turned out so pretty. So again, this one is a little more involved. There's a lot of steps, but I think it would be a lot of fun to get the kids involved creating those watercolor backgrounds. And it's a way for them to add something special on a gift that they didn't necessarily buy, but at least they got to make the tag for. I hope that you enjoyed these fun shaker tags and that you give them a try. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any future videos. You can find a complete supply list in the description box below, and you can find more about this project along with more photos and a complete supply list at our blog at stampawaywithme.blogspot.com. You can shop for W plus nine supplies at wplus9.com as well as at many of your favorite retailers. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and Periscope. I've also selected a couple other videos for you that you might be interested in, so just click on the upper left or right to watch those. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.